Sup, Gary. Your proposal at today's draft meeting was the bomb. Looks like it was a serious hit with the guys, too. Higher-ups included. You really killed it this time. Thanks, Alan. I couldn't have done it without you, though. Without your constant help and support, that proposal would have never been submission-ready. I seriously doubt I could have done all of this on my own. Don't give me too much credit. All I did was get some documents together. But I'm not kidding, Gary. That thing was genuinely impressive. If all goes well here, our company revenues are going to the moon. All the department heads and even the CEO was surprised. Have you been planning this thing for a long time? It looked like months of preparation went into it. Well, I came up with the rough idea for a pretty long time ago, but I kind of felt like it sucked, so I just sat on it for ages. I guess you can call it a lack of confidence. Without you finding all those documents and encouraging me to go the distance with it, it probably would have stayed that way forever. Your talent are wasted on you, my dude. I wish I had brains to come up with ideas like that. Quit it, bro. It was just a fluke, I swear. Besides, I could never pull in better sales numbers than you. You're a beast when it comes to shifting merch. That's why I was so surprised when you did so much to help me. I figured you'd be so busy with things on your end that you might not have the time to get what I needed. I was so happy when you did, and like I said, it saved my ass in terms of actually being able to get everything together in time. Thanks, Alan. Quit it. You're embarrassing me now. Anyway, enough with the chit chat. Let's get down to the important stuff. What do you say we go and get some celebratory beers this weekend? Or more specifically, a pre-promotion celebration? I guess your plan for today are to get home quickly and share the good news with your wife. Yep, pretty much. What's up, bud? You seem kind of deflated. Aren't you looking forward to telling your wife? No, I am looking forward to it. She'll probably be pleased. Right. And not probably. Of course she will. Anyway, I'm going to find a nice bar for us to head out to at the weekend. Leave it with me. Cool. Thanks. Don't mention it, alright? See you at the office tomorrow, pal. Mm. Mm. Gary, hello? What's going on? When I got to the office, there was a letter on your desk. What's going on? Is this some kind of prank? You are coming to work, right? Um, hello, Gary. You were late eight minutes ago. Get your ass down to the office. It's not like you to skip work. Wait a sec. No way. Is this stuff written in this letter for real? About your wife threatening to divorce you if you come to work? I just assumed it was some kind of prank. But I guess you really aren't here. Hello? You're worrying me now, buddy. Can you see my messages? Is something wrong? Respond when you see these messages. Is this Alan? It's Gary's wife. There's something I need to talk to you about, Alan. Gary's wife? It looks like he didn't show up to work today. Did something happen? Yes, that's what I was hoping to talk to you about. I need to ask a favor of you. You'll find his letter of resignation on his desk. Would you mind taking it out and handing it in to the appropriate person? The appropriate person? I'm not sure exactly who that is in this situation. Do you mean the president? Yes, my husband's going through some mental health issues at the moment, and he's far too anxious to be at work. So please, Alan, we're counting on you. Whoa, hang on a sec, would you? How could you expect me to hand in Gary's resignation to the company president without even hearing from the man himself? Rather, that's actually what he wants. This is a big decision. And it's not something that can easily be undone if I do it. Are you really Gary's wife? Yes, I am. Can't you read or something? That's what I just told you, isn't it? Sure, but with all due respect, I'd just be taking your word for it. That's not enough for me to make a judgment on this. Besides, why does Gary want to resign in the first place? Things were going so well for him here. He wants to resign because he doesn't want to carry on working there, obviously. That is generally what resignation means, you know. After all, your company is full of brain-dead morons, isn't it? The only reason I'm able to message you now is because Gary gave me your number. How else would I have gotten it? 
Would that not have been obvious to you if I didn't say it? Thanks for proving my previous statement about the average IQ at your office. Even still, I can't go ahead with something so major based on a sudden bunch of messages from someone I've never met. I don't care what you say. You can be as rude, arrogant, disdainful towards me and the people at this company as long as you like, but I won't be handing in Gary's resignation on his behalf. If he wants it handed in so bad, tell him he needs to come in and do it himself. Goodness me, just how much of a brain-dead moron are you, Alan? It's precisely because he can't do that that we're messaging you, Einstein. My patience is wearing thin with you now. Will you hurry up and do as you're told before you and me have a falling out? Why can't he do it himself? At the very least, he must have came into the office first thing this morning before anyone else, right? to put this so-called resignation letter on his desk. My husband doesn't feel up to seeing anyone right now. He's too anxious. It doesn't take a genius to figure out he must have been having some kind of trouble at work. Could it be perhaps that someone there was bullying him and made him stop wanting to do his job? No, absolutely not. I can categorically state that that's not what happened. Everyone here loves Gary, higher-ups, and workers alike. That goes for the guys in our department and the company as a whole. I've never heard of him being involved in any trouble here. Zero. Zip. Everyone loves him? <laughs> now I really have heard it all. You don't have to try and cover for him. I am his wife, you know. I know everything. And what's that supposed to mean? That he's a useless, good-for-nothing social misfit who's no good for anyone for anything. Go on, admit it. I bet he causes trouble for you all at the office pretty much every day, doesn't he? Don't hold back, you can be honest with me, Alan. I'm sure you know it would be in everyone's best interests if you helped him to quit. Um, what the hell? Are you sure you're not making some kind of misunderstanding here? We cannot be talking about the same Gary. Sure, maybe he's not the most proactive when it comes to suggesting new ideas or pushing things forward, but when it comes to the fundamental understanding of the way things work here and the mechanisms behind our business strategy, there's no one more knowledgeable than Gary. Not just that, but ask him a question and he'll explain in detail until he's sure you understand absolutely everything. He often picks up on things the boss says during meetings that most of us miss. Then he'll go around the office afterwards making sure everyone understood. I guess that's what I'm trying to say here, is that you're wrong. Gary's a highly competent worker who's vital to this company. And not just that, but he's one of the nicest guys I've ever known. If you were genuinely his wife like you say you are, there's no way you'd be attacking him in this way. No, dear. Like I said, the only reason you've fallen for Gary's trickery is because you're a pea-brained moron with an IQ lower than my shoe size. Besides, who the hell do you think you are? Anyone would think you were his labor union representative. You should remember you're nothing but one of his co-workers. Yes, I am his co-worker, but I'm also his friend, which means if he was ever in trouble, I would want to be there to help him. There's no way I'm handing in this letter of resignation based on the dubious claims of a complete stranger who messaged me out of the blue, slandering and denigrating him. You really are a grade-A hypocrite. What's the weather like up there on your high horse, Mr. Perfect? Would you like a sainthood? Should I start calling you Jesus? Do you have any idea how much my husband slacks off at home? Huh? Despite the fact that he should cook my dinner as soon as he gets home from work, he never does any such thing. He doesn't do the laundry, he doesn't wash the pots, he doesn't clean the house. Instead, he pathetically attempts to do it all in one go on his days off. I don't think I need to tell you how filthy that means our house gets. He obviously has no intention of fulfilling his obligations to his family. Um, hang on a second. If my memory serves me correctly, I'm pretty sure I remember Gary telling me his wife was a stay-at-home housewife a little while back. Do you have a job? No. Huh? I despise the notion that it's a woman's job to do the housework. But sadly, patriarchal notions of male chauvinism and the oppression of women are woven just as deeply into the fabric of society as they ever were. The idea that women should be in the kitchen is parochial and antiquated, an anachronism. I mean, come on, don't you think it's strange? The idea that we should be the ones who do the cooking and cleaning just because we're women? Um, hang on a second. It's not that I think women should do all that stuff just because they're women. Wait, are you telling me Gary does literally everything? 
He both works full-time and does all the cooking, cleaning, and housework? Of course he does. It's a man's job to provide for the woman, and that includes at home, too. He's the one who got down on one knee and begged me to marry him. He's the one who made me change my surname. Surely this is the least he can do for me in return. Forgive me for asking this, but are you forcing your wife to do all of the housework? No, I'm still single. <laughs> I knew it. How did I know? You must give off single energy. With old-fashioned ideas like yours, you'll never find a girl who wants to marry you. Me? I wouldn't want a man who thinks like you if you paid me a million dollars. It looks like the conversation went a little off track. For the time being, would you just tell Gary to get in touch with me when he can? I'd really like to discuss what happened today with him directly. I'm afraid that's not going to be possible. You see, Gary's phone broke yesterday. All right. Well, can you tell him to stop by my house then? I can't do anything without hearing what his wishes are in all of this. Not happening. Excuse me? Why not? Rather he does end up quitting his job or not. Surely you understand. It would be irresponsible to go ahead with this without speaking to him first. If you're really Gary's friend, as you seem to be claiming you are, then I suggest you start having a little more consideration for his feelings. I've made his wishes abundantly clear, and if you choose to continue willfully ignoring that, then you're nothing but an enemy. You won't be seeing my husband at the office anymore, all right? You can do this, Alan. We're counting on you. What? Quit ignoring everything I say. I am not handing in that letter. Mm. Mm. Did you just block me? What the hell? Hello? Can you see this message? Alan, are you awake? Gary? Is it really you? Yes. Sorry to message you at this time. It's fine. Don't sweat it. Gary, are you okay? What the hell happened? And what's going on with your wife? Forgive me if this sounds rude, but dude... She seems kind of nuts. I'm fine. I'm so sorry, Alan. When I told my wife I might be in line for a promotion last night, she flipped out and smashed up my phone. That's why I couldn't message you myself. She did what? She finally fell asleep a few minutes ago. I'm messaging you from my work-use computer. I'm so sorry for all the trouble she caused you. Bro, I feel awful for everyone at work having to deal with me not being there on the fly like that too. Don't sweat it Gary, really, it can't be helped, but dude, are you really quitting the company? Yeah, she said if I don't quit the company, she'll divorce me. Wait, what? Hang on, I don't follow, that makes no sense, isn't a wife usually pleased when her husband gets a promotion? She said if I spend any more time at the office than I already do, our family will fall apart. She told me I need to stop spending so much time at work and start properly fulfilling the duties I took on when she gave me her hand in marriage. She probably thinks if I get a senior position at the company, my hours will go up and she won't be able to boss me around and bark orders at me at my house as much. What the hell kind of twisted messed up logic is that? I guess I could understand a woman feeling anxious about the prospects of her man spending more time at the office. But not for a reason like that. I mean, what the hell? What are you going to do if you quit your job? Sylvia said I'm going to start work at a company of her choosing. The bottom line is that I'm on strict orders to quit my current job as soon as possible. So what's it going to be? Are you going to do as she says like a subservient little lapdog with no will of his own? Are you seriously going to tolerate being treated like this? I get where you're coming from, but Alan... She's the only woman who would marry someone like me. I'm scared of being alone. It was always my dream to get married. I can't bring myself to throw that away now that I finally have it, especially after I worked so hard to get it. I want kids too. Besides, Sylvia is great when she's in a good mood. It's not all bad, I swear. So you're going to spend the rest of your life walking around on eggshells, terrified of doing or saying the wrong thing, and never able to truly speak what's on your mind. Are you going to just do as she tells you for eternity? I didn't want to say this, but you're pretty much her slave. What? It couldn't be more obvious to me that she looks down on you. The way she spoke about you made it seem as though you were nothing more than a piece of dirt on the bottom of her shoe. Like you were her plaything, to be tossed around, controlled, and manipulated as she sees fit. 
There's no way she treats you with respect and decency at home. I just know it. Go on, tell me. I'm right, aren't I? Well, I guess you are, but I only have myself to blame. It's because I'm not working hard enough. Even though you work full time and do all the cooking, cleaning, laundry, and housework entirely on your own, what exactly it would take for your effort to be enough? What more could you possibly do? Um, I'm single, so it's not like I can claim to be an expert on any of this, but I do know that marriage isn't about one side bearing all the burdens on their own. It's supposed to be a team effort, Gary. What happened to caring for each other? What happened to respecting and being considerate towards each other? Surely that's what married life you imagined for yourself looked like. Because I know for sure it didn't look like the one you're living. Tell me, Gary, are you happy? I don't know. I always thought I could make things better by working harder. I see. Listen, I won't say anything else on the matter. I've said my piece. It's your life, and these are your decisions to make. But if you're going to quit the company, then you at least hand in your resignation letter yourself. All right, got it. If you ever change your mind and need my help, I'll be there in a heartbeat. Whenever, wherever, rain or shine, I have your back, bro. See you later. Hey, Alan, hang on a sec. Do you really think my proposal has a chance of making it? Huh? If you ask me, I think there are a bunch of things wrong with it. It's unpolished and full of flaws. No, no, no. You're thinking about this the wrong way. Those aren't flaws. They're points for improvement. If there are things that need working on, then all we need to do is have the necessary discussions and work on them. Anyway, weren't you about to quit the company five seconds ago? Hey, I guess I was. You're right. I was. God damn it. I don't want to quit. Alan, that's it. I've made my decision. Your decision? What are you going to do? I'm sorry to have to ask you this, but will you help me? Mm. 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 Gary, where are you right now? Ah, uh, I see you finally woke up then. Good morning. Today was a late one, huh? I just asked you a question. Answer me. Where the hell are you? Where am I? I'm at work, of course. What? But you promised me you'd never go again. When I woke up, all of your things were gone. I don't understand. You've got some serious explaining to do. Alan let me leave my stuff at his place. What? Whatever. Cut the crap and get your ass back home right this instant. You promised me you wouldn't go to the office anymore. You lied to me, you despicable traitor. I didn't promise you a thing. You decided that on your own with no input from me. Besides, I won't be coming home anymore. I already canceled the contract with the landlord. You have until the end of the month to find some place else to live. What? What the hell are you talking about? What utter nonsense? Do you seriously think I'm going to tolerate you breaking your promises like this? I'll divorce you. I swear I will. Okay. Divorce sounds good, huh? I can't take being with you anymore. I've reached my physical and emotional limit with your selfish, domineering behavior. You pick fault with literally everything I do. You launch into a vile, humiliating triads of abuse against me on a daily basis. What exactly was I to you? A housemaid? Your personal ATM? Your slave? I don't know what you wanted. But one thing for sure, it sure as heck wasn't a marriage. That's why we're finished. It's over. We're done. What? No, no, no. no. Oh, please don't do this, baby. Uh, just wait a second, okay? Let's not do anything brash in the heat of the moment. What are you talking about? Why would you come at me with all of this stuff all of a sudden? It's like you're a different person. It's not all of a sudden. I was just deceiving myself into believing you weren't a vile, abusive control freak for a very long time. I convinced myself I should keep my mouth shut and tolerate it because I loved you and wanted our marriage to work, but then I stopped and thought about it, and that's when I realized, I realized I never married you to live a life like this. What the heck is this crap? 
Just how dumb and irresponsible can you be? Am I speaking to a child? Adults don't just give up the moment they don't get their way. That's how three-year-olds behave. Quit throwing your toys out of the stroller and suck on your milk bottle for a while. It'll help you calm down. If you're not satisfied with your life, you should come up with ways to improve it and put in the hard work required to actualize it, not throw a tantrum and flip everything upside down in a rage. Why am I the only one that has to work hard? What have you done to make this relationship work? Go on, name one thing. All you do is sit on your phone scrolling Instagram, playing games and reading manga all day. The only time you make an effort with your appearance is when you go out to drink with your girlfriends, you help yourself to my savings, and spend my money on the most pointless, frivolous crap imaginable whenever you feel like it. Look at it from my point of view. Can you name a single positive thing about being married to you? There aren't any, are there? Marriage isn't about one side constantly having to endure bullshit while the other side does whatever they want all the time. Oh my god, Gary, what happened to you? You're horrible. How can you say such awful things to me? You never used to be like this. You used to be kind. You used to be so sweet and thoughtful. You've changed. My kindness has limits. Not standing up for yourself in the face of constant belittling, abuse, and manipulation isn't kindness. It's weakness. But you are basically right. After all, it's precisely because I changed that I'm breaking up with you now. It was thanks to my workplace and certain amazing co-workers that I finally realized what I needed to do anyways. I'll be sending you the signed divorce papers to your parents' house tomorrow. See to it that you get it handed in with your signature on them before the end of the week. No, wait, please! Are you just going to end things without even talking to me first? How could you be so irresponsible? You're the one who drove me to this, Sylvia. Not only that, but you completely refused to work and forced me to keep on top of literally everything at home, even though I was working full time. Why do you think you get to force me to do your bidding, like some kind of slave, while you slob around on the sofa all day, eating potato chips and endlessly scrolling on your phone? Mm. Mm. Gary, please, I admit I was in the wrong. Please, will you forgive me? I swear I'll start doing the housework from now on, all of it. You'll never have to wash another plate again for as long as you live. Please just rethink the divorce. You can even carry on at your job too. How does that sound? Please, Gary, you're all I have. I can change, I swear I'll work hard, I, I swear. Your change means nothing to me because it doesn't come from a place of genuineness. You're only saying this because you realize I'm sick of you and I want you out of my life. Besides, I know about all your secret meetups with the guys from the dating apps. What? I've been burying my head in the sand and pretending it wasn't happening for a long time, but not anymore. It all ends here. Oh, and I'll be filing for as much compensation from you as I possibly can. Good luck. Wait, what the hell? No way, this has to be a joke. I don't have any money. Not my problem. How about you sell all your branded bags and fashion accessories you bought with my money? That should help you get started. I mean, it's not even gonna come close to covering everything you owe me. But you did just say you're gonna start working hard from now on. With all the compensation you're about to owe me, you'll have the perfect chance to prove you actually mean it. HQ barging past security and kicking down the door of an empty meeting room in a desperate bid to find her husband. Naturally, security weren't gonna let that slide. Within less than 30 seconds, she was in a chokehold on the floor and the cops were on their way. Even after being let out of bail, she kept on showing up outside the office every day. She soon stopped showing up once the boss stormed outside in a rage and yelled in her face at the top of his lungs how much money she owed him for the door she kicked down. Gary's divorce went by without a hitch thanks to all the proof he had of his wife's cheating, not to mention the mountain of chat logs demonstrating what an abusive control freak she was. In the end, Sylvia was ordered to pay him a hefty sum in compensation. Gary tells me that these days, she's working as a cleaner while living at her parents' place under the strict supervision of her father, who used to be a military commander and is known for his strict temperament and harsh discipline. Her days now consist of working 14-hour shifts to come up with the monstrous amount of compensation she owed her ex-husband. Now that it's behind him, Gary can finally laugh about the whole ordeal. 
When the divorce went through, he joked that his ex-wife finally had the opportunity to make up for sitting around on her butt all those years. When he made his comeback at the office, he worked so hard it was like he was possessed and his already good reputation at the company soared to heights previously unimagined. Since coming back, he's a lot more cheerful and proactive than before. As for our friendship, we're closer than we've ever been. I say friendship, but it's more like we're half rivals, half best buddies. All in all, Gary is happier and more optimistic than I've ever seen him. I can honestly believe that getting rid of Sylvia was the best move he ever made. No one needs Sylvia in their life.